Good morning, everyone. Great to see you. Let's all stand and sing together this morning. So again, we're so great to see, so happy to see you all this morning and everyone joining in online. Uh, it's so great to see you. For announcements this morning, we have a slideshow, I believe. Okay. Morning. Um, I think in the past 11 years, maybe, we've done three, maybe four carnivals, family carnivals. Some of you may not have been around for them. And I just want to know if there's going to be interest this year to do a family carnival for our community. Um, it would be Saturday, August 27th from 10 to 1 um, during the day. Hope for good weather. But I'm just curious how many people are interested in helping. Lots of people are needed. Um, we have lots of game stations, a story tent, welcome tables. We serve food, uh, face painting, hopefully a bouncy house. So 
I will be in the adult Sunday school classroom that way past the men's, ba uh, men's bathroom after the service. So if you're interested or you just want more information about it, come and see me. And we're just going to have a really, really brief meeting just to sign up. And we'll go from there. But the slideshow is just going to give you a little taste about what our carnival has looked like before. It is, you're right. This Wednesday evening on July 20th um, at 6.30, come to our house. Uh, it's over by the elementary school. If you need our address, uh, let me know. Um, it is an all-church family bonfire, and so we'd love to provide some dessert. So come ready for that and bring a chair and a friend. So we'll look forward to seeing as many of you can come Wednesday night at our place. Also Thursday, the 21st, so the next evening, Youth are invited to Jim and Cindy Moreland's home uh, from 5 to 9 for the Crew Lake Day. Please bring modest swimwear, an appetizer, or a side to share, and a friend. So any questions, let Emily Watson know about that. Uh, next, we've got an announcement about the fair. So somehow I got nominated for this, not my husband, so everybody can give Dirk a little bit of grief. Um, so the Polk County Fair is about 10 days away. Um, not that my house has a countdown going. Um, but there are still plenty of shifts available for parking and tickets. This is something our church has done for, boy, I can't even tell you how many years, but it's a great way to serve. Um, the donation that the fair gives us always goes towards uh, organization or a specific cause. And I, if you have ideas, let somebody on the board know. Um, I don't think anything has been decided. Um, but yes, this is the time to sign up if you have not. And we still have blanks. Dirk, Sue, or I will probably be calling you. Um, otherwise, yeah, feel free to sign up. You're always allowed afterwards or before to come in and enjoy the fair for you a day with your family without cost. So, yeah. Did I miss anything? Okay. There are many more uh, 
announcements and updates in the bulletin, so please look through that. If you'd like to give to our ministries here uh, at United Covenant Church, there's a wooden box back there below the sound booth. Um, if you don't know where it is, look for the nice bright shirt back there and look down. <laughs> That's where it's going to be. Um, or you can give online uh, at our website, unitedcovchurch.org, and click online giving. Please sign your attendance pads, and you can stand up and say hello to all those people around you. This song might be kind of new to a lot of people. Um, so as always with new songs, I encourage you don't, you know, you don't have to try and sing along with us. You can just get familiar with the, uh, with the lyrics. So this is a lot. Here we go. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock. Praying for a miracle. Thirsty for the living well. Only you can satisfy. Sweetness at the mercy seat. Now I've tasted. It's not hard to see. Only you can satisfy. There's honey in the rock. 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 Freedom where the spirit is. Bounty in the wilderness. You will always satisfy. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, and on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you've got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Started flowing when you said it is done. Everything you did's enough. I keep looking, I keep finding. You keep giving, keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep praying, you keep moving. I keep praising, you keep proving. I have all that I need. You are all that I I keep looking, I keep finding, you keep giving, keep providing, I have all that I need, you are all that I need, I keep praying, you keep moving, I keep praising, you keep proving, I have all that I need, you are all that I need. honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Started flowing when 
you said it is done. Jesus, who you are is enough. There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock. And oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus.
Christ, we thank you so much for being our, our cornerstone, uh, that solid rock that we get to stand on. And so I just pray uh, that we could all just, again, open our ears and our hearts this morning uh, to hear what you have to say. Uh, just help us to regularly go to your word to just really develop that solid rock and that cornerstone. And we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Our first scripture is from 2 Chronicles, chapter 23, verses 17 through 20. But after Jehodiah's death, the leaders of Judah came and bowed before King Joash and persuaded him to listen to their advice. They decided to abandon the temple of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and they worshiped Ahash poles and idols instead. Because of this sin, divine anger fell on Judah and Jerusalem. Yet the Lord sent prophets to bring them back to him. The prophets warned them, but still the people would not listen. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, son of Jehoiada, the priest. He stood before the people and said, This is what God says. Why do you disobey God's command and keep yourselves from prospering? You have abandoned the Lord, and now he has abandoned you. Then our second scripture is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19-21. through 21. But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with, the, with this inscription, The Lord knows those who are his, and all those who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made from gold and silver, and some are made from wood and clay. The expensive ones are used for every, special occasions, and the cheap ones are made for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Okay, thank you so much, Sally. All right, well, um, we're going to go to the Lord now for some prayer. And, yeah, we thank, have much to be thankful for today, but... Um, Anybody have anything that they especially want to praise God about today, maybe? Or maybe there's something that you feel that we all need to lift up together in prayer. Peterson Picnic. So if you're a Peterson, there's a picnic. And maybe if you're a Pearson, you can slide in on it too. I don't know. But anyway, probably not, but... That's today, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Anybody else got something? I know we had some kids go to Unite, the youth conference, and so um, Emily will be, they'll be getting back later today, so pray for their travel. All right. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, thankful for the rain that we had. Praise God for that. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, well. Yeah, Hendrick is saying that they lost their cat for a couple of days and he came back, so praise the Lord. Got another eight lives left, so yeah, that's good. Yeah. Definitely, Fred Carlson. 
Okay, we're going to pray for that family as they're trying to get back to the state. I think, was it Debbie had one? Amen. So, yeah, praise God for that. So, if you couldn't hear, Debbie said this is the first Sunday she's been able to be here without oxygen, right? So, praise God for that. And, you know, that is really amazing how God is, is helping and bringing some healing there. So, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer then. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, God. We just have to give you the praise and the adoration today. God, thank you for Debbie. And God, we just have to say thank you for, um, for bringing healing to her and that she is here not even on oxygen. I mean, that's just really, that's what we've been praying for. And it's so good to see it. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we continue to pray for others that are that are not feeling well, and pray for Pam Van Hoeklum, who's I think was sick, and but others that are sick, Lord, and just pray, Holy Spirit, for healing. Thank you, Jesus, and God, we're um, bless the Petersons as they have their picnic today, and Lord, we pray for um, the Emily and and the youth that are coming back from Unite. They travel, give them safety. Thank you for the rain, Lord. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for um, Carlson's cat coming home. And we just praise you for answers to prayer, God. There's so many. Thank you, Jesus, for um, your help with things. And we and we do lift up the Chad Carlson family as they want they want to get home from Africa. So Lord God, protect them, help them. Bring them back safely. And Lord Jesus, we continue to pray for our leaders, our government. Pray for our um, military people and, and police officers and others that are in, in the line of, of duty. Lord, just protect them, bless them. And so we, we thank you, Father, for your provision. God, Holy Spirit, send revival into our land, into our world. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so, um, well, a couple of weeks ago, we already it was um, family camp, and when we were there, there was a, uh, they call it a 5K fun run. So we, we went into that, and I tend to get kind of competitive when I get into things like that, and I, I just about was dying, you know, and I'm thinking, as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, fun run? Like, <laughs> what's fun about this? <laughs> it's just torture, you know, but, but when you're, when you're, the only good part is when you're done, really, you know, because it feels so good to be done, and um, like they say, you, you know, something about if you hit yourself with a hammer, it feels, I don't know, whatever on that, I, but... <laughs> Similar, maybe, I don't know, but, but I, I was just thinking, you know, as we go through things in life, some, some things, that they're very painful, and not just physically, but in, in many different ways, and there's parts of our lives that we go through that are very, um, very hard, and lots of trials, but, you know, I always think whatever part of life I'm in, whether it's a good part or a bad part, I just always want to be faithful because, you know, one of my life goals is just that when I stand before God the Father, that he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. So I want to be faithful with, with my life and with all that God has given to us. And, of course, he's given everything to us. You know, he's given us salvation through Jesus Christ. He's given us whatever degree of health that we have, we have, um, you know, uh, our gifts and abilities, and everything we have is ultimately from the Lord. Every good and perfect gift is, as it says, comes down from the Father of heavenly lights. And so um, God is the one that, that is the giver of every gift. 
So in, see here, in the book of Romans, <clears throat> and chapter 14, verse 11, Paul writes this. He says, For the scriptures say, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me, and every tongue will confess and give praise to God. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. So every one of us is going to give an account of our lives. What did we do with it? And were we, were we faithful with our lives? And yeah, God help us to be faithful in every part of our lives. Second Timothy um, chapter 2, verse 15, again, Paul is writing, and he says, work hard so that you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. So in our lives, we want to be faithful, not just with our, our jobs, you know, do the best we can with our work and so forth, but but work hard in your life, in, in, um, in every part of your life, to present yourself to God and receive his approval. Again, we're not earning salvation. We're not earning anything because we receive everything by God's grace. But, um, you know, the Bible says to work hard and, and, and present yourself to God, receive his approval, be a good worker one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. Okay, so we want to correctly explain the word of truth. Um, you know, it's it can be easy to get off of the truth. And it's and as we read on here, it says avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. This kind of talk spreads like cancer, as in the case of Hymenaeus and Philetus. So there was these two people in the early church, Hymenaeus and Philetus. They have left the path of truth, claiming that the resurrection of the dead has already occurred. In this way, they have turned some people away from the faith. Okay, so they were... They were espousing something that just wasn't true. You know, they were, now we know the resurrection of Christ happened, but they were saying, oh, the, the, re, the general resurrection has already happened. And, and we're going to read a little bit more about that later, but Paul is, is saying, no, it didn't. What are you talking about? The resurrection's already happened. It's like, no, it hasn't. And, and you know, the devil sometimes will just throw things out there that are just plain not true you know it's I mean yeah there he's the father of lies right so he will try to um, he'll try to get us to believe things that aren't true and these two people Hymenaeus and Philetus were leading people astray they've turned some people away from the faith because they didn't stick with the word of God they started to veer off and it's again it's um some things can can be so close. It, it, now, this one, I don't really know. As I read this, I'm like, how, you know, they claimed the resurrection had already happened. Like, that that one seems pretty obvious to me that that, that hadn't happened yet. But, um, you know, some things that are not true, they, they sound pretty close to truth. They're, they're kind of believable, you know, like... Um, I don't know if this is a good example, but last week I was playing the bass, and um, well, probably if I just, it's easier for me to explain it by giving you the sound of it. So in one of the songs we did last week, this is a great bass, by the way, but um, so in one of the songs, this was the note, this one, it was like a C what? C sharp? I don't know. Okay, I should get my stuff figured out before I get up here and talk in front of you people here, but sorry about that. Anyway, it's like a C sharp, right? Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll say that it's a C sharp. 
So it was good. You know, I was playing the song, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that worked out. Well, the next song was a C something. But I wasn't paying attention. It was just a C blah, blah, blah thing on there. Because it looks like that when you, if you ever read these chords. And I'm like, oh, yeah, C whatever. You know, so I'm like. And then Carter was up here, and he's like, uncle, you're playing the wrong note. And I'm, I'm like. <laughs> and then I got the look from Leah. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not. I'm like, it's the C thing. You know? Well, the, the truth is that the second song was supposed to be this one. Hear the difference? Well, that was totally throwing it. Whereas if I was Bill, I'd be able to pick up on it right away. But, <laughs> but it just was, so it just sounded horrible, you know, and I didn't even realize. I thought I was. I thought I was reading it right, but I was reading it wrong, you know, and and with the scriptures, you got to be careful that you don't read it wrong and, and get off on something. And these two people, Hymenaeus and Philetus, somehow they'd gotten this wrong idea and they were bringing everybody along with them, you know, and it was really throwing people off. And so there is a real truth. There's absolute truth. And there, and in our world today, what's really popular is a thing called relativism. And relativism, here's one of the definitions that I got off the internet here. Um, relativism, the, doc, the doctrine that knowledge, truth, and morality exist in relation to culture, society, or historical context and are not absolute. Okay, so relativism says there's no absolute truth. So, um, so maybe in one culture, it's, it's acceptable to give or take bribes. It's not a big deal. In another culture, it's not good. But relativism would say, well, your truth is as good as my truth. It's just maybe a different context, so let's live and let live. You know, you you can have your truth. I got my truth. Let's just all get along, and we'll we'll all be happy. And in theory, that sounds kind of. It sounds like well, it makes. Let's all get along. You know, certainly, but the truth is that there is only one truth. Okay. Now, with some things, it doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't really matter if you, I'll probably get in trouble, but it doesn't really matter if you cheer for the Vikings or the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, or you could say, maybe a little more acceptable or tolerable here would, would be to say, you know, uh, if you cheer for the Edmonton Oilers or the Calgary Flames, is that a big deal? Probably nobody here cares about those teams. Or the Winnipeg Jets. Any Jets fans in here? <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, no, no nobody. <laughs> but, you know, it, it doesn't really, stuff like that doesn't matter, okay? Really, it doesn't. But when you're talking about truth, real truth, it does matter, okay? So there really is only, only one truth. Um. And if you jump off of a cliff, you will die. You know, you're not going to, even if you think that you can fly, you really, gravity is a, is, is a reality, okay? You're, gonna, you're not going to make it. And um, anyway, so truth, there is absolute truth. And even though the other thing sounds really appealing, like, hey, we just want to get along. You ever seen that bumper bumper sticker coexist? And it's got all the different religious symbols and let's just get along. Well, you know what? Praise God because of Jesus and because of Christianity in our culture, we do have tolerance for people, right? We don't kill them. We don't have a jihad and go kill people that don't agree with us. We say, well, you can you know, we don't agree with you, but you got the freedom to do it. It's America. Praise God. But um, 
but some places you'll go and they're not going to have any tolerance for you. And but there there is an absolute truth. And his name is Jesus. Jesus is absolute truth. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am, here's another verse I probably say every week, but still, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say, I am a way. And, and Jesus doesn't just know the truth, he is the truth, okay? So he is at, he's the absolute truth. But let's go on here. So um, again, talking about Hymenaeus and Philetus, these people that were teaching things that weren't true. They have left the path of truth. Okay, so people can start out in truth and then get off. As life goes on, as the forces of life go on, the influences that come into our lives that lead us into things that are not true. It can happen. And these people had left the path of truth. Now, in Scripture, we've got tons of examples of this, but um, <clears throat> so back in the Old Testament, here's one example. There was a man, uh, the king of Judah, the nation of Judah, his name was Joash. And because his father died at a very young age, Joash was seven years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem 40 years. His mother's name was Ziba from Beersheba. That rhymes. Joash did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight throughout the lifetime of Jehoiada, the priest. Okay, so Jehoiada, the priest was this godly older gentleman that really uh, mentored King Joash. And as Joash was just a, just a young boy, you know, seven years old when he becomes king, and, and jo Jehoiada, the priest, really guided him and advised him and led him. And Jehoiada, um, you know, always pointed him to the Lord. And things went well as long as Jehoiada was there to, to, to guide him. But let's read on. Let's skip on down to, if we go down to verse 15, it says that Jehoiada lived a, to a very old age, finally dying at 130. Wow, that's old. He was buried among the kings of the, in the city of David because he had done so much good in Israel for God and his temple. The people recognized that Jehoiada um, had guided young King Joash, and he had done so much good for the land that they gave him the honor of being buried among the kings. So they just, they recognized, wow, this guy was, he was a blessing. And what a blessing it is to have good leadership. It's a gift from God. And, but let's read on a little bit. But after Jehoiada's death, the leaders of Judah came and bowed before King Joash and persuaded him to listen to their advice. They decided to abandon the temple of the Lord. Um, they decided to abandon the temple of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and to worship Asherah poles and idols instead. You know, as I read the Bible over and over again, that there's this kind of theme that, you know, things are going well and people are worshiping God. God is prospering the nation and everything's going well. And then it, it, it always seems it gets to a point where people, you know, then they rebel against God and things just go downhill. And I always think, man, what part of prosperity don't you like? You know, what part of blessing do you not like? Why do you have to, you know, God is being good, you know. Why do we have to go against him? But these people persuaded King Joash to worship these Asherah poles and idols, to worship idols and, and to turn away from God. Because of this sin, divine anger fell on Judah and Jerusalem. Yet the Lord sent prophets to bring them back to him. 
the prophets warned them, but still the people would not listen. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada. So the old advisor, the old priest that had died, his son Zechariah stands up and, um, and it says that he stood before the people and said, this is what God says, why do you disobey the Lord's commands and keep yourself from prospering? You have abandoned the Lord and now he has abandoned you. Then the leaders plotted to kill Zechariah. And King Joash ordered that they stone him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. That was how King Joash repaid Jehoiada for his loyalty by killing his son. Zech Zechariah's last words as he died were, May the Lord see what they are doing and avenge my death. Well, that Joash was just a fool, is what he was. Can you imagine that this old jo Jehoiada that had blessed his life, he kills his son. What a, a, you know, what an idiot, really. I mean, we can just say it. He's really stupid, you know. And then it says, in the spring of the year, the Aramean army marched against Joash. They invaded Judah and Jerusalem and killed all the leaders of the nation. Then they sent all the plunder back to their king in Damascus. Although the Arameans attacked with only a small army, the Lord helped them conquer the much larger army of Judah. The people of Judah had abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors. So judgment was carried out against Joash. And as we read on, Joash gets assassinated. Well, so it's a really sad story. But again, we see that, that when people turn away from the truth, there's always trouble that comes from it. And, and we're living, again, in a time where truth, people are so, um, so messed up that they don't know what truth is. And every day it seems you read about something that is more insane. Does it not seem that way? It's just, you know, sadly. It's just, Wow. How can, you know, people are just so balled up that they can't, but it's because, you see, it, there's a spiritual blindness. It's not, it, it has a spiritual element to it. And when people turn away from the truth, who is Christ, then what comes in are things from the enemy, which are lies. And the lies of the enemy blind people, and it makes your mind really dull, and you can't figure out right from wrong. You can't even figure it out anymore. But the Lord Jesus has the power to bring us back, and we thank God for that. But let's, let's just read a little bit more here in um, <clears throat> Second Timothy. Or no, I'm sorry. We're going over to, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting lost here. Okay. Second, we're back at 2 Timothy. But God's truth stands firm, verse 19, like a foundation stone. With this inscription, the Lord knows those who are his, and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. You've got to turn away from evil. Okay, but first of all, I was going to read this. 2 Thessalonians 2. So just bear, I know I'm skipping all over, but just bear with me here. Second Thessalonians 2. Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how he will and how we will be gathered to meet him. Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. That's what Hymenaeus and Philetus were saying, okay? They're saying, Oh, it's already begun. We've already, we're already there. Um don't believe them, even if they claim to have a spiritual vision, a revelation, or a letter supposedly from us. Don't be fooled by what they say, for the day will not come until there's a great rebellion against God. Do you think that that's happening? Maybe. I think it is. I think that, and I'm not trying to be negative, because we're not living in fear, but we just have to see what's going on, right? We have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. 
And um, for the day will not come until there's a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed. Who's that? That's the Antichrist, the one who brings destruction. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of the Lord claiming that he himself is God. Don't you remember that I told you about all this when I was with you? And you know what is holding him back. And I would say to Paul, I'd say, no, I don't know what's holding him back. You knew what it was, but we've lost that between there and now. Um, and you know what's holding him back, for he can be revealed only when his time comes. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it will re remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Then the man of lawlessness will be revealed. But the Lord Jesus will kill him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. Okay, they refuse to accept Jesus. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived, and they will believe these lies. Then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. Very plain, isn't it? Okay, let's go back to, now we can go back to 2 Timothy. But God's truth stands firm. Like a foundation stone with this inscription, the Lord knows those who are his, and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. Okay, so we've got to turn away from evil. We have to turn away from anything in our lives that is evil. If there's anything in your life that is starting to get you off the path of following Jesus, get away from it. Okay, just don't go that way. And... Um, all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you'll be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Okay, so it doesn't matter what mistakes you might have made in your past or what, you, you know, bad things that you've done. You come to the Lord and he sets you straight and he, and he fills you with his Holy Spirit and you're filled with the spirit of truth. And whatever you were messing with over here before, he will, you come to the Lord, you ask for forgiveness, he'll forgive you and he'll set you on the course that you need to be on. And it's way better. It's way better. And so you begin to follow Jesus, and he's going to set you and get you ready for special things that he has for you. And, it, and that's a wonderful thing. Then you're going to fulfill the purpose that he's made you for. And you're going to be that special utensil for honorable use. See, God's grace can do that. We can't earn it. Again, we can't deserve it. But as we follow Jesus, and he's got a special use for you. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lusts. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. So it's good for us to encourage one another as believers, right? Again, I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone, <clears throat> be able to teach, and be patient with difficult people. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Okay, so we're not here to hit people over the head with our Bible or to be rude or mean or argue. That's not what we're here to do. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. 
then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap, for they've been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. And we want to bring people out of the darkness and into the light. It's so much better in the light and uh, standing on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, who is the truth, and he will guide us into all truth and into what is good. So that's the encouragement. Let's just keep following Jesus. Stay true to his word. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. You know, read the Bible. Apply it to your life. Listen to the Holy Spirit, and he will lead us and guide us. So let's just pray that even as the team comes on up. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. God, and we just pray, Holy Spirit, help us, Lord, to have our eyes open and help us to be listening to your word and to be applying it and not to, to go off from it, Lord, but to keep following you, Lord Jesus, and to... Um, Lord, we want to thank you that you're patient with us and fill us, Lord, help us to speak the truth in love and fill us, Holy Spirit, guide us in all your truth. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand and sing this thing. Do every bad circumstance I believe that you are my fortress you are my portion you are my hiding place I believe you are the way the truth the life
truth and life. And um, once again, prayer available. Anybody wants some prayer, either out that door there or there's another prayer room down the hall. There is a meeting, again, for the um, carnival meeting. That'll be in the adult Sunday school room up here. Come and, and check it out and see what's going on there. And um, leadership team meeting will be soon afterwards, just to remind you guys of that on the leadership team. And um, I just wanted to say, you know, any questions you ever have about the Bible or it's not bad to ask questions. And, man, you know, be free, feel free to come and, and say, hey, wh what does this mean? Or what, what is this about? There's no shame in that. And, um, you know, not that we know all truth, but we know the one who knows all truth, right? And he's good. And um, anyway, just to leave you with that. So let's just close by praying one more prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. Bless everyone today and fill us, Holy Spirit, with your truth. Thank you, Jesus. We pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you.